Hi, it's Dr. Fox, and we're going to talk about the most common depressive symptoms. And I think that depression is something that is just exploding worldwide. More and more people are experiencing it. It is harder for individuals to stay motivated, stay focused. And I think that's because we're just in this constant state of cognitive overload. And what that means is, is that we're just constantly stimulated by our phones and by the world around us and by this and that and this and that and all this bad news and too much bad news and too much fear and too much doubt and then there was COVID and that made everything worse and all this other stuff. So what are those suppressive symptoms? Because I think that when we build insight into something, we're better able to control it. So let's get into it and let's talk about the most common depressive symptoms and like, share, and subscribe and let's get started. Oh, and comment too. Yeah, I want to hear from you. So let's get at it. What are the common symptoms of depression? Well, understanding the signs and symptoms of depression is critical for early identification and seeking appropriate help. Now, some common symptoms of depression, and a lot of these, you're not going to be overwhelmed and like, oh my God, I never thought about that. But it's important to hear it. And it is sadness or low mood. You're not surprised by that. Loss of interest or pleasure in activities that you used to enjoy. Now, this is called anhedonia. And a lot of individuals are actually surprised that this is a criteria for depression, but it absolutely is because it's something that you still want to do, but you're not as interested when you do it. You don't get much pleasure from it, things like that. It's not because you're too busy with kids or family or work. It's that that interest and pleasure you derive from it has diminished. Now, changes in appetite or weight. Now, that can be eating too much, eating too little, right? You start to lose a lot of weight or you're gaining a lot of weight. It can be both sides. Sleep disturbances. Sleep is so important. Now, our world is sleep deprived. Absolutely true. 100% true. There's just all these issues and concerns with sleep, 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 and we're not getting enough of it. And it's really important that you monitor your sleep disturbances. Now, sleep can absolutely create or make worse the mental health symptoms that are already there. And depression is absolutely a part of it. So sleep disturbance is also a symptom of depression, but interestingly, right, because it can go back and forth, is it not getting enough sleep, having restless sleep, having unsatisfactory sleep, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty waking up. And then when you wake up in the middle of the night, it's hard to go back to sleep. So all of those factors, all of those things, relate to those sleep disturbances we see in those who are depressed. Also, fatigue or lack of energy. Now, this one, you're, you're not surprised by that. It's this hard to get going. It's hard to get moving. It's hard to get up in the morning. And it's very difficult. You don't have the energy to do the things you once did. And it's important. And it's not because of any medical concerns. And that's something else as well, is that Make sure that you get your physical every year. Make sure that you get your checkups and things as much as you can, as best as you can, because a lot of mental health symptoms can be due to medical causes. And certainly lack of energy or chronic fatigue can be a factor as well. That's really important. Feelings of worthlessness or excessive guilt. Now, that's a big one because what happens is something occurs in your life. Maybe it's your fault. Maybe it's not. It doesn't matter because when you're depressed, interestingly, we have more energy or we utilize more energy focusing on these issues. And we have a greater sense of guilt, but thinking and worrying is actually part of the depressive cycle, believe it or not. Because at the high end, we have anxiety, right? We have a lot of energy and we're nervous and we're worried. And then we worry so much that we start to get overloaded and then we start to lose all this energy and then we go to the low end. And that's part of that depression. And it's that upper part when you have that energy where that excessive guilt is, that excessive worry, that excessive concern. Now, that can also be a comorbid anxiety disorder, but may not. It could also be part of a restless depression or anxious to stress, which is an additional specifier for depression. Now, feelings of worthlessness. Now, this could be you just feel worthless. You feel like you don't have a sense of worth in your life. Like, are you important? And that's part of what happens in depression is that it impacts not only how you see yourself, but how you see others in your world. And it wears away at your sense of worth. 
Now, difficulty concentrating or making decisions because you don't have the energy is another symptom as well. You don't have the energy. You can't concentrate. You can't focus. You can't make those decisions because it's just too hard and too much energy and too much effort. That's another component. And lastly, recurrent thoughts of death or suicide. Now, this is really important. If you're having those thoughts, it is important that you find someone to talk to, that you find a mental health provider, you go to your emergency room, you go and get help. That is really important, even if they're fleeting, because mental health symptoms, maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns, they bloom, blossom in the dark. They're like mushrooms. They grow in the dark. But what we want to do is we want to shine light on them. That's why videos like this are so important. We have to shine light on those things. And don't be embarrassed if you have thoughts about hurting yourself or thoughts of death or things like that. It's important to get help for those things. Now, it's important to note that the severity and combination of all of those symptoms that I just mentioned are going to vary by individuals. That's why depression isn't depression isn't depression. It's different for all of us to different levels. Different symptoms are based on culture and experience and different relationships that we've had or that we've lost or whatever it may be. So we have to be aware of that is that my depression, if I had it, is different than your depression. So it's important to note that. What are the potential causes and risk factors for depression? Let me tell you, depression can have a lot of different factors. We just talked about some. It can be caused by a combination of genetic, biological, environmental, and psychological factors. It's that combo. So family histories of depression, certainly brain chemistry imbalances factor into it as well. Major life challenges could be trauma, could be chronic illness, substance abuse, absolutely makes it worse. Absolutely. And ongoing stress are among the potential most impactful risk factors for depression. Understanding the underlying causes can help in developing those effective treatment plans for you and prevention strategies. This is why I think going to a mental health provider that can get a good history, can get an understanding to where you're coming from and what those past experiences are, familial history, your current experiences, any traumas that you have, stresses at work, all of these, that combo. We got to understand the combo so that we can understand where that depression is and we can combat it. And when we talk about combating it, you're probably like, oh yeah, well, what are the treatment options for depression? Well, I'm going to tell you. So there are several efficacious treatment options for depression. And the most appropriate approach actually depends on the individual specific needs and circumstances. It's not one size fits all, right? That's why when you go to a burger joint, there isn't just one burger. There's a lot of different kinds of burgers because there's a lot of different types of things that work for different people. Now there's psychotherapy. Psychotherapy could be like cognitive behavioral treatment, CBT, interpersonal therapy. That's what I like to use a lot as well as some others. Those are very common and they're highly recommended. And the research supports that, that they are efficacious, meaning that they are impactful in lessening depression. We know that individuals who learn the skills and strategies to manage their depressive symptoms and their life circumstances, those interpersonal factors, manage their depression successfully. Now, medication such as SSRIs, those can be really helpful, or other antidepressants. They could be prescribed, but understand that those are mostly in moderate and severe cases. Now, in other instances, there might be lifestyle modifications such as adding regular exercise, maintaining a healthy diet. I'm telling you, it's so important. Garbage in, garbage out. So it's important to realize that trying to eat as healthy as you can, as best that you can, exercising, just trying to develop that healthy lifestyle as much as you can, practicing stress management techniques like mindfulness or walking or just slowing down and putting your phone down, taking a break from your phone. That is so important. For example, right now I'm locked out of my phone. I don't know why I'm locked out of my phone, which is weird, but... Part of me is like, yeah, that, that's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm going to deal with it. As soon as we're done here, I'll get back on my phone, I'm sure. But initially, I was like, oh, no, I'm locked out. But then I was like, hey, it's going to be a nice break. So little tip about me for you. Now, we have to look at all of these different factors when we create a treatment plan. When I'm creating a treatment plan for a client that has depression, I look at those combo factors that we talk about. 
I learn from them about which strategies, which inroads are most advantageous. It's not a one size fits all because what we got to do is we got to develop that specific plan to help you do it differently. And it's so important. And you want to make sure that you do find a qualified mental health professional that can help you learn this. If you can't afford that, and I certainly understand that there are resources online, there's workbooks or worksheets. I have some on my website as well that you can check out that might be able to help you get help. That is so important. Now, a video I'm putting out soon is called the three biggest mistakes when trying to deal with depression. And if you're dealing with depression or you know someone who is, you might find value in that video as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Please comment and please be well and be safe. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.